uh, from uh, uh, Bar Ilan University, Israel. Um, the title of talk is uh, quite long, so it's a protein protein interaction of stress response genes are uh, conserved in subterranean and fossil real animals and cluster unambiguously to their shared ecology. Please. Thank you very much. I would first like to thank the organizers of COSI and ISMB for uh, accepting my uh, work for a presentation here. Uh, sorry. Well, I'm a PhD student at the Lab of Cancer Genomics and Biocomputing Lab led by Dr. Frankel Morgenstein. In our lab, we study uh, vast, vast uh, topics related to cancer genomics. For instance, we use chimeric protein-protein interactions to find cancer-specific phenotypes using uh, probabilistic uh, methods. We also use comparative genomics of species from different ecologies to study protein domain evolution, which is my project for my PhD studies. So our project comes to compare protein-protein interactions in, living, in species living in three different ecologies, namely subterranean, fossorial, and above-ground species. Subterranean is underground for several, spend some time above ground and some time below ground, and above ground only above ground, as the name says. Here are three uh, examples of each uh, organism in each ecology. We have the, the blind mole rat, is a subterranean. We have the armadillo as the fossorial example, and human as the above ground animal. Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. So the idea is to check if we can blindly start and correctly identify which organism belongs to which ecology. So we want to use protein-protein interaction to, for that task. And we need to calculate or predict the protein-protein interaction in different organisms using autologous proteins. So to that end, we use established uh, method for predicting such protein protein interaction, which is based on co-occurrence of domains in protein interactions. Namely, we start from a verified experimentally protein protein interaction from the biogrid. Then we identify protein domains, PFAM domains, in each of the protein sequences. And uh, we calculate the domain-domain co-occurrence table, which we have domains horizontal and uh, horizontal and vertical domains. So we count the n for each entry is the number of times which protein, which domains appear in the uh, interaction, such that one domain is in one protein and the other in another one. For example, this entry is number one for A and A, and there's only a single uh, interaction in this uh, network. We see A here, and A here, and protein five, and protein four. So this is how we calculate. And using this uh, table, which is based on the Sprintzak and Marg Margalit from 2011, 2001, sorry, we use this methodology to uh, calculate protein-protein interactions. Like I said, we use protein, calculate protein-protein interaction in orthogonal proteins from occurrences of protein domains in humans' interactions. We utilize the gain and loss of protein domains in such proteins using all human known interactions. Orthogonal proteins have been can, can collected from the CAG database, which contains approximately 2,500 protein domains, uh, protein groups. Sorry. So our main question was, can we, from blindness, only the data, can we successfully uh, uh, assign each organism to its ecology? So to this end, we started from only the conservation of uh, protein uh, ontologies, also logs, 
And for in this example, we use the hypoxia inducible uh, factor uh, two A. We took the sequence of these domains across all uh, species, 23 that we have in our database I will talk about, and we performed hierarchical clustering. What we see here is the number of the, in the nodes are the p-values saying how confident we are at this node. So we have 20, uh, uh, two, this number for all, all of them. So as you can see, we cannot correctly assign each organism to his ecology because there is no clear clustering. For instance, we have a above ground related put together near a fossil animal, and we have outliers like human and chimp. So, going back to protein-protein interaction, we took protein-protein interaction of hypoxia genes that are conserved in subterranean and fossil animals, and we performed the same analysis. Here we see clearly, and the p-values are very high, that the organism clearly cluster to their ecology. We have uh, four subterranean animals, 12 above ground, and seven fossil animals, which good, good and perfectly cluster together to their ecologies. We see the same phenomenon in heat shock proteins. And when we consider circadian clock genes, we see a little bit of mismatches uh, in the clustering efficiency. This is because the severity of the stress is higher for hypoxia than the circadian clock. Next, we performed a gene enrichment analysis on all the proteins in all the 20C organisms which are orthotologues. And we found the metabolic processes that over-represented in such proteins. For example, we found, we found the metabolic process, translation, tRNA metabolic process, and other. And we took all this data for protein-protein interaction in these animals, 23 organisms, and we developed a database which catalogs all these interactions across these species. And this uh, database is called pastoral. So one can go put his favorite protein inside here and search the database and he will receive the protein-protein interactions with all other proteins. Then he can compare it across all 23 organisms. Also, he will receive KO annotations and other data that I'm now talking about. And this, this is a very good uh, resource for us, for everyone who can uh, study uh, cancer and other uh, diseases in a comparative manner. So, in summary, changes in PPI networks of orthologue proteins during the evolution have been predicted by our chipping method. The clustering analysis of PPI networks results in correct assignment of animals to the shared ecology. Metabolic pathways are overrepresented in orthologue proteins common to all organisms and conserved in evolution. All this data of PPI has been organized into a very friendly user pastoral database. With that, I would like to conclude and thank my uh, PI, Dr. Frankel Morgenstein, our lab manager, Dr. Dorit uh, Raviv Shai, our excellent collaborator, Dr. Alessandro Gorovsky, who has developed and maintains all the, the databases we have in our group, including Pastoral, and Somnat, Dr. Somnat Tagore, for his work on developing the CHIPI method. I also would like to thank uh, Aviad Sivan, a talented uh, master student that finished, and he contributed uh, some data that I didn't talk about and the funding uh, to this work, and I will be at poster 799B at 6 o'clock. Thank you very much for the talk Thank and the you. listen. So uh, 
Any questions? Uh, we can take uh, one question. No? Uh, if you know, it's thanks, speaker, again. Thank you.